Hello, welcome to A March for the Ages. I'm Tanaya Frazier from Brew Baker Technology Magnet High School, and our guest today is Mrs. Evelyn Wilson. So, Miss Wilson, tell me about yourself. Uh, like you said, I'm Evelyn Wilson, and I'm a native Montgomeryan. Uh, I graduated from the schools of Montgomery, and I retired from Maxwell Air Force Base as a civilian employee. I'm married, two children, and my husband and I both are empty nesters and happily retired. Okay, that's great. Um, what was your childhood like? Um, I have to say it was wonderful. I had a, a wonderful mother and wonderful father. Um, where I lived, it was a community, and all the neighbors knew each other. And uh, we attended church and uh, just had good family times. Okay. Um, have you faced any challenges in your adult life that are similar to the ones you experienced when you were younger? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, my first employment, uh, prior to that, um, you had to take a typing test with the state to be employed in the clerical field. And um, I went to the employment office where the test was given. I was the only black in that uh, testing. And I was given the test one time, called by name, and dismissed. And before I could exit the front office, I heard them giving the test again. Mm. And I knew that was unfair, but being the age that I was and the maturity level I was, I didn't know what to do. So I just chalked it up to, I'll try again somewhere else. Okay. Um, what do you remember most about the Civil Rights Movement? Um, as a, a, a junior high school student, it was an exciting time. Um, I would sit and listen to the adults and the things that they talked about, and I would go to the different churches in our area where Martin Luther King would be speaking, where they would hold meetings at the Montgomery Improvement Association office. I just wanted to be there. It was just new, it was exciting, and I wanted to be a part of it. That's great. Um, when was the turning point that you realized that this, this was the movement you wanted to support? I think it was just the first, the first meeting I attended, the first time that I heard people talking and gathering, and it was just, I mean, it was all in the air during this time leading up to the march, and uh, I just wanted to be a part of it, and, and uh, I wanted to do my part. That's, that's amazing. Yes. Um, was there anyone that you know besides the most common people that are famously known that you consider as a civil rights hero? I would have to say my mother. Uh, she instilled good values in me, good work values, uh, good Christian values, good values as a, as a neighbor mm -hmm. and uh, as a daughter. And uh, that helped me to know where to place good values. So I would have to say my mother. Um, from my experience now, schools are more diverse and they're always rapidly changing. What was it like back then in your schools? Um, of course, the schools that I attended, they were all black, mm -hmm. predominantly, all black, not predominantly, but all black. And the thing of it was, with the oppression for blacks at that time, things that you could not do, you had to drink water at a certain water fountain. Um, and other places that you couldn't frequent, restaurants and what have you. That oppression caused a lot of blacks to try harder, to be the best citizen you could be, to be the best student you could be. You didn't have the fighting at school. You know, everybody was striving for a common goal to be the best that they could be, have a good adult life. So the values were different and they were better in a sense. And you know. Um, let me see. What do you think is the most important thing about the civil rights movement? Love, the coming together of different people. Um, recently I attended a, a city function and I met a lady who worked in the governor's office and I was talking at the table about the fact that I had marched you know, to the Capitol. And this lady was white. And she explained to me that her family went to Selma to join the march from Selma to Montgomery. 
And that is one thing that's important, is that it wasn't just blacks who were marching. It wasn't just about that. It was about oppression anywhere. And that was the beauty of it. And I think that stands out a lot for me. Okay. Um, what do you think will be in store for us in the future as far as race being an issue? Um, the best way to answer that is whatever foundation is laid today. Uh, where do we go from here? Uh, that's the best way I can answer that. It's, it's going to be what's, what's put in by the youth of today and what's left behind by the older people like myself. What are you sharing with the younger people and how are you impacting their life about racism and diversity? Most definitely. Um, have you ever thought when you were younger that you would be the leader that you are today? No way. <laughs> no way. Believe it or not, uh, and a lot of people wouldn't believe this about me, but I was shy. Um, I didn't have a lot of self-esteem about my abilities. But my mother told me something uh, that stuck with me, that all that you are right now is not necessarily all that you're going to be. Be the best that you can and put your best foot forward, and that's all you can do. So, no, I did not, and I've surpassed my own expectations in a lot of areas. Um. You, I recall that you said how the communities were together and that they all believed in one thing. And do you think like from, from back then to now, what has changed the most and what has changed the least? Um, one is communities have changed. Where you live has changed in that you can live right next door to someone and you don't know them regardless of their race. Communities don't work together to uh, do like they should in certain areas of the city. And uh, that, that element is missing, that coming together as a community, that, that's missing. Okay. Um, what do you believe uh, young individuals today should focus on pertaining to this matter? Learn as much as you can about the past uh, from different, uh, different aspects. Uh, from different people, not just Dr. King, not just Rosa Parks, but some of the others. There are some that are not talked about as much that played a part. Someone once said um, it took all of that to bring about what did happen with the march. So just learn as much as you can about the past. Like someone said, how do you know where you're going if you don't know where you've been? So history is important. Um, what actions do you believe need to be taken so that we all may live in a better and more healthier community? Care about your fellow man. Um, don't judge first, but just care about them. My motto for living is that if you lift someone else up, you'll be lifted also. So you just, just love one another and just, just help one another. Okay. Um, from what you have experienced, do you continue to tell people, like advise them on how they should be rather than what the students were back in the day as young individuals? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I, uh, I'm known for giving my advice freely <laughs> uh, with young people especially. Um, and it's because they're growing and they don't know where the older generation has been. Um, anyone that's working now that's young, what has happened, they are following behind the racism that I had to experience and overcome. And I tell them, be humble, respect your fellow man, be the best employee you can be, be the best student that you can be, put your best foot forward and plan well, and above all, get an education. Okay. Um, have you, from previous accidents or events, uh, like the cases with Brown, and what I'm trying to say is, uh, do you think, like, from the accidents that are happened, do you think they could have been prevented? 
as far as race cases nowadays? Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. My um, husband has a saying, he says all the time, that things happen for a reason. And um, how do you know what it's like to really have love if you've never had hate? So I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure that things would have been different. But all we can do now is look to the future and make every effort that we don't repeat the mistakes of the past when it came to the problems that we had. Do you share your experiences with your children? Yes, I do. Sometimes more than they want, but yes, I do. That's great. Um, do you believe that there is a time where we can all overcome this issue? The issue of racism? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, and I think it happens on an individual basis. And I see great strides now in um, um, improvement when it comes to, to racism. You know, there are a lot of children of both races or different races that it's new to them. They don't understand that concept. I just happened to be a place in my life where I lived through and I experienced it. Even my own children, the experiences I had, they cannot relate, you know, to it. But uh, we can overcome it, and I can't say when, but it should be an ongoing journey to eradicate racism and discrimination. Yes. Do you think not saying that this needs to happen, but do you think there's a possibility that we could fall back as far as progressing in the mm. race? No, no, I, I, I don't think that that would be something that would happen because we've, uh, we've all experienced the treasure of not having so much racism and what happens when people do come together. So no. Okay. What do you hope for in the future? I hope that there's continued effort um, for uh, equality and uh, when you see a problem to pluck it out. Uh, I've seen that happen in Montgomery that it is much better. You know, they have more people who are of different races who are appointed to, appointed to different boards and uh, who hold different roles in Montgomery. You know, we have blacks that run for public office, but um, I just see it, you know, that we can't help but to strive to do better. I understand. Do you, um, is there a moment from in the civil rights movement that you would wish to share that most people don't know? Like from, from my experience, the only thing I know is based on a history book. Mm -hmm. But is there anything that you have experienced or that you have witnessed that is not commonly known for everyone? Well, I think um, I, had, I often speak about uh, the march itself. I was a student at Loveless, and um, we left the classroom and joined the marches when they came from St. Jude and came the route right by our school. And uh, we went over to the Montgomery Improvement Association office, which was across the street, and joined the marchers. We were given instructions about nonviolence, about being humble, and how to conduct ourselves during that time. And we sang songs, and it was just camaraderie, regardless of the different races that were involved in it. And um, it was just really um, just an experience, you know, to be there and to be together, you know. Uh, one thing I do recall that really stands out was the point, I believe it's Montgomery Street, we called it Five Point Hill. It's one of the highest points hidden downtown. And when the marchers rounded the corner and we were at that peak, you could look down and it was just an army of people. Wow. And um, I was sharing with someone that being so close to downtown, there was a pulse in the crowd that you could feel the fear because we didn't know whether we were gonna be harmed, you know, coming that close because everybody wasn't in favor of this march. Yes, but when we bottomed out at the bottom of that hill, we saw that the president had sent the Air National Guard and they were in their Jeeps on each street that we passed that ran into the street and they had soldiers on the buildings. 
and the helicopters were flying over. And when we saw those first Jeep, that, that first Jeep, it was just a sense of calm and we sang a little bit more robust, you know, and the rest of the way marching up to the Capitol, everybody felt really good about it. It lifted the spirit at that time. Well, thank you so much for coming today, Mrs. Wilson. This has, I'm Tanari Frazier, and this has been a March for the Ages.